So I kind of wanted to make a video for a while about visioning a socialistic America. And the problem is that a lot of people have a hard time visualizing what a socialist society would be like because one, they only know the individualistic capitalist world in which we were born into with the Christian normativity, the heteronormativity, and the patriarchal normativity. So for America to be a more functioning socialist society, we would literally have to overturn the foundational ideologies in which this country was created. So whether you are a Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, or an anarchist, or any form of socialist, you have to create the foundation to create a socialist society, whether it is an anarchistic society or a Marxist state-led socialist society. And the way that we do this is by forming local cooperatives in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our community, on the internet. We have to create a collective society. The next thing that we would have to do is actually consciously deconstruct the uh, ideologies in which we were raised in. That is white supremacy, patriarchy, heteronormativity, um, capitalist realism, uh, individualism. We have to deconstruct these and think more of how we can function as a collective society. So as socialists, no matter what your faction, it is our goal and our main initiative to normalize socialism and to show that socialism is an acceptable alternative to the capitalist hellscape in which we live. Socialism in America or in just any Western society is not going to happen in an election period. It's not going to happen in the next five years. It's not going to happen immediately in the next 10 years. But if you're a person who believes in the incremental system, then you just do what you can to make sure that we at least go back to the days when uh, our country was most prosperous under a more uh, social democratic model. This means going back to a time in American history when we had policies that were from the New Deal. Uh, you know, cheaper housing, higher uh, progressive tax rates for the rich. If you're a person who believes in an incremental form of socialism, you know, doing it through elections, doing it through uh, policy changes, then that's the route that you would go to. I'm not going to say what system and approach is better because socialists have been arguing about which method is better for nearly 175 years. And we need to get to a place where socialism is more normalized and more acceptable to the normal people who think that whatever model they have is the best model. Now, what do I envision a socialist America to look like? Well, first, we would not have the level of comfort or uh, dismissiveness of racially motivated jokes, uh, gender motivated jokes, um, homophobic jokes, things of that nature, because those types of jokes are indicative of a lack of caring for those marginalized groups. But this also doesn't mean that we will be a humorless, comedy-less society. No, we just would tailor our jokes to be of a different nuance because humans are going to make jokes. But the question is, is the joke at somebody else's expense? And are we laughing and ignoring it because we think it's perfectly acceptable? This is why we need deconstruction because by deconstructing the ideologies that motivate these jokes in the first place, you know, the whole I hate my wife joke or, you know, black people walk like this, white people walk like that. Those are all founded 
in ideologies that are problematic and harmful to us as Americans and individuals. Another thing in a socialist America is the recognition of the autonomy and sovereignty of peoples in this country. Specifically, we would focus on programs that give resources and livelihoods to these marginalized individuals, namely the First Nations people of North America, but the United States in general. We would also have policies in place to make sure that anybody who has the ability to accumulate wealth cannot use that wealth to leverage it against people who do not have that wealth. So that's why we would have to go to a system that does not use money as a in a credit system that can be accumulated and leveraged. This is why some socialist models have proposed the idea of labor tickets or labor credit. We also would make sure that we have communities that are not car-centric. They would be public transit-centric. Walkable cities. There's people who want to say walkable cities are dangerous, but our ancestors lived in walkable cities and towns. My grandpa grew up in a small community where everybody knew each other. They had a credit system that they would just eventually give. We would focus on a mutual aid based society. We could say goodwill. You know, you have a, a store that you just take all of your items that you don't want anymore and people go there and then they grab them and then they exchange them. It's not that hard to visualize. We would have community gardens. The biggest building in a community would be the community center. We wouldn't have churches necessarily. As we transition out of capitalism into a communist society, religions would become very personal. They would not become institutional. Commerce would be uh, decentralized. We would have uh, nationalized banking systems if we were still using money. Uh, we would have decentralized... Uh, industries of the different communities so instead of having three major chicken companies we would have a whole bunch of chicken production plants and companies in that area and then the community would have a say in how those companies are ran to benefit their local community these are just examples of what could happen in a socialist society. It's about people. It's a people-based society that does not use a accumulable currency to leverage against those. Basically, the, the, the relationship of debtor and creditor does not exist, where people have to debt out their labor or something of value that would disadvantage them for the sake of somebody else who has more power.